1984 Porsche 944. It was my dad's. He had uh, bought it in, if I had to guess, I'd say 2018, 2019. I think he paid about $1,800 for it. And he bought it from some young guy. It was blown up, didn't run. The engine was bad in it, paint was bad, everything was bad. <laughs> It. And he said, you know, I always wanted one of these since I was young. And I made a joke. I said to him, I was like, 1984? I said, was this the car that you could have had if you would have had a kid? And he goes, oh, I never thought of that. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was the year I was born. Yeah, he started, uh, he started restoring it and putting it all together and painting it. Every little nut and bolt he went over. I went over one day his house, and he had all these buckets lined up in his garage. And I said, what the hell are you doing? He said, oh, I'm electroplating. And he had electric wires plugged into water, and he had little hooks, and he was dipping bolts one at a time in three different solutions. Yeah, he was a uh, he was an auto body man. Since he was old enough to drive, he was you know painting cars and doing body work out of my grandparents' garage. He went to school out in Blairsville for auto body school. He got a job at Salem's Auto Body in Lower Borough and worked there most of his life. And then when I graduated, he re he left Salem's and he went to City Collision in downtown Pittsburgh. They loved him down there. They would have special cars come in, at Porsches and high-end Mercedes cars and stuff. And only he was allowed to work on them because he was you know, that guy. Everything was, was perfection with him. You can go around and look at all the panel gaps on this car. They're all perfectly even. I was over his house the day he was doing that. He had pieces of painter's tape and he was measuring all the panel gaps the whole way and wow. making sure they were all perfectly straight. He was the most perfect perfectionist person I've ever met in my entire life. got the new motor in it that he built, you know, rebuilt the transmission, rebuilt the rear end. Every single piece was, as he said, it was either, if it wasn't replaced, it was restored. And he took it out of City Collision, they painted it for him. Uh, he had one of his buddies down there, he's a real good painter, clearly. He brought it home, and I think he put the side window glass in it, the quarter glass, and then uh, on August 5th, he passed away. After that, you know, I had to go through some things, and sell his house, and deal with all the you know things you deal with with the relative past, especially your father. You know, I went through all that, got everything done, and I brought the car up here and we finished it. Spent a couple long nights up here and a couple nights still at my, it was still in my dad's garage. It was hard, it was really hard because I'd, I'd get started working on it, I'd start on the interior. You know, I'd work 15, 20 minutes and I'd just have to leave because you know, the house still smelled like him. You know, everything still, like, he was the last person that touched this thing. It's tough, you know, it was emotional. It's, it's all together, mostly. I mean, there's a few little things little tiny things that I have to make sure I do right because I know Vern would have done them right. That was his nickname, but yeah. it, was, it was Big Vern. Your dad wanted this to be a show car, mm -hmm. right? I mean, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what you carried through is that, yep. that, that wish of his to have it be a show car. So tell me that story, like how you, how you got it to uh, World of Wheels here in <laughs> Pittsburgh. I have a buddy of mine who has a flatbed. We got the car all patched up here, literally finished it the night before World of Wheels. I was here till probably 11 o'clock that, 12 o'clock that night, working on it. A couple friends came up, just stayed till it was done. I was I was happy with how it looked. And the next day I took off work early and a buddy came out with a flatbed. We loaded up, took it downtown Pittsburgh. And I followed him the whole way there, just sweating, watching this, you know, this on the back of a flatbed going down 28 in the middle of winter. It was, it was salt ice flying up, sweating the whole way down there. We had two tie downs in the frame in the front, two in the back, one on each wheel. And he's like, I've never tied a car down this much before in my life. He says, but this is different. <laughs> he says, I don't want nothing to happen to this. I actually drove it off the uh, truck. I drove it into World of Wheels and I parked it. I got out and I wiped it off and got it clean and ready to go. And that's when it hit me. It was like, today's my dad's birthday. How well did it go over down there? Really well. <laughs> I uh, won first place in my class. A lot of people looked at it. A lot of people had a lot of questions because I had a, uh, a guy actually right next to me. He had a Porsche. He owns a sign shop out in Vandegrift, and he said, you know what? He said, because I, I had a little paper I printed out from Walmart, poster thing with information about the car and my dad, and he's like, this car deserves a better sign. He said, I have a sign shop. He says, e here's my email. 
email me all these pictures you have and I'll make you a sign tonight. So I came in the next morning, he had this big metal sign made up for me and he hid a pair of angel wings in the one picture. Nice. The, the, my favorite part was you get a lot of the you know older guys come up to you and like, I haven't seen one of these since I was your age. And man, I always wanted one of these as a kid. I mean, a lot of people liked it. I got a lot of people taking pictures. A couple people that I know that are building cars that are you know, kind of this caliber uh, came because they wanted to see. In fact, my old boss, who's uh, building an old uh, Volkswagen, and it's like this, just meticulous work. He came down just to see this. Nice. When he found out I had it down there, he said, I wasn't going to come. He said, I heard you had it in there. He's like, I had to see it. He said, I came down just to see this. He says, boy, did it not disappoint. I said, like, that means a lot coming from you. <laughs> He's really good at what he does, too. He's kind of like my dad in a way. Yeah, it was a good show. It was, it was emotional, but it was, that's like I told all my friends. I only cried five times. <laughs> Yeah, and then I guess when you got it back here, challenging as well. Right? Yeah, yeah, we had to uh, unload it in a snowstorm. Foot of snow and a gravel ramp. I had to drive up it. I just hammered down. Just, we'll get it in there. Because that's so, what Big Vern would have done. This is what Big Vern yeah. would hammer down. I've tried to stick to exactly what I knew he was gonna do or what he said he was gonna do. Like the steering wheel, I found it in his house. We took it out and we stuck it in the car and I said, oh, this has to go on. Cause I don't know if you've ever seen the stock Porsche 944 steering wheel, but it is hideous. It's like a Renault. <laughs> it is the Looks worst. Like an 80s steering wheel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We put this one on and he had the adapter and everything for the hub for it. So I was like, I'm pretty sure this is what he wanted. And there's a set of uh, like racing harnesses and a harness bar and everything I still have to put in yet. Well, it's a heck of a legacy, that's for sure. Yeah, it yeah. really is. You've done it proud. That's really nice. Yeah, it was, and that was the goal. And that was, and that's why I told everybody that was always my goal since I was little. I just always try to make him proud because he was always like the coolest guy. Yeah. You know, he always had cool cars and obviously. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's what got me in the cars. Six, seven years old, my dad would be out in the garage working on his buddy's cars. I'm like, man, I want to do that. And I used to grab onto his leg when he'd leave to go back to work at lunchtime. I'd be like, take me with you. I want to work on cars with you. And he says, no, 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 you don't want to work on no cars. It's a bad idea. And he always talked me out of working on cars. Then I worked on cars and I said, wow, he's right. This is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and yet here we are. Oh, uh, yeah. You're right? What are we looking at here? 84 dime 44 base. What all you uh, have done with it? Uh, heads all been reworked. Everything in the motor's been replaced except the uh, lower end. But everything was in good shape. Everything on it's new. Every piece you could replace, I've replaced. If it wasn't replaceable, I restored it. And what about your suspension? Don't you have some uh, fancy coilovers? Um, seek us. Come from Sweden, I think it is. A fully adjustable front and rear. Mono plates on top. 